Hi there, and welcome to week 26 of Nutrition Bites. Okay, so it's almost fall. It doesn't really feel like fall here in Southern California, um, but I wanted to share a recipe for homemade trail mix that you can put a fun fall spin on. Okay, so we'll talk about the ingredients. We'll talk about then the types of dietary fats. Then we'll talk all about omega-3s. Um, and then the health benefits of omega-3s, and then some plant-based sources of omega-3s, and then I'll present the weekly challenge. Okay, so this is one of my favorite snacks to make. Um, just make a big batch, bake it in the oven, and have it on hand um, as a snack is great. Um, you could use any nuts. Um, you could use raisins instead of cranberries. Um, there's lots of different ways that you could mix this up using different spices, different seasonings. Um, this recipe calls for unsweetened applesauce, but you could certainly do pumpkin in its place to kind of make it more of a fall flavor. Um, so totally up to you to how you want to do, do it, but um, very delicious, very easy to make and great to have on hand. Okay, so this is a review from one of our previous presentations, but I wanted to go over it again. So there's kind of three main types of dietary fats. We have saturated fats, trans fats, and then we have unsaturated fats. Then we can further break down the unsaturated fats into mono and polyunsaturated fats. And the polyunsaturated fats, one of those types are our omega-3s. Um, but the three main categories, saturated, trans, and unsaturated, um, those are the three broad categories. And overall, we want to limit or avoid all saturated and trans fat in our diet. Um, so then typically about 20 to 35% of our calories should come from fat per day, but that should be coming from the unsaturated fats, so the mono and the polyunsaturated fats. Okay, so omega-3s are, again, a specific type of polyunsaturated fat, and there are then three different types of omega-3s, and they're differentiated more at the cellular level according to how long their carbon chain is. So a little bit into the biochemistry, we won't go too far, but basically they're um, differentiated by how long they are. So ALA, this is the shortest um, omega-3 fatty acid, and this is found in plant foods like chia, walnuts, flaxseed, hemp seed, etc. Now, ALA is considered essential because we cannot make it in our bodies. We have to consume it in order to have it in our body. Um, but once we have ALA in our body, we can then convert it into the longer chain omega-3s. So the next two are EPA, which is a little bit longer than ALA, and then we have DHA, which is even longer than EPA. And these ones are not considered essential because once we have eaten foods with ALA omega-3s in them, we can then convert them into EPA and DHA. So it's just this first one that is absolutely essential. Um, so food sources, I mean, it's still good to get sources of these and some food sources are fish and seafood. Um, you can also do an omega-3 supplement. There's even vegan ones that are like algae based. Um, so it's still good to consume sources of these because sometimes our body's not super great at converting from ALA into EPA and DHA. But for the most part, if you need an, if you eat enough ALA, you should be okay. Okay, so the health benefits um, of omega-3s, again, they are an unsaturated fat, so this is really good for our body at the cellular level. It helps to decrease our insulin resistance and increase our insulin sensitivity. It helps um, with lowering cholesterol, um, helps to lower our triglyceride levels. It helps to support heart function, again, because it's lowering those, those um, triglyceride and cholesterol levels. Um, Omega-3s have been found to support healthy brain function, um, as well as reduce depressive symptoms and even reduce rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. Okay, so there are lots of plant-based sources of omega-3s. Now we need 1.1 to 1.6 grams of ALA, that's that essential version of the um, uh, omega-3 fatty acid. So we need 1.1 to 1.6 grams of ALA. And theoretically, if you eat that, you should be able to convert enough into EPA and DHA. Um, so just to give you a, um, a little bit more information, if you eat one ounce of walnuts, so that's like about a handful, if you eat a handful of walnuts, that's going to provide you with 2.6 grams of ALA. So that's 
And perfect. That's more than you need of ALA. But we classically think of chia, flax, and walnuts as kind of like the, the only sources of omega-3 plant sources. But there are actually way more sources. Um, and this is just a visual of some of those other foods. So blueberries, spinach, rice, cauliflower, canola oil, edamame, lots of plant options. Now, these other ones aren't as high in the omega-3s as are chia, flax, and walnut. But if you are having a variety of these foods, they're going to add up over the course of the day. So for example, if you have a half a cup of blueberries, that's going to provide you with about 400 milligrams of ALA. So you would need to eat, you know, a couple other things to meet your daily recommendation of 1.1 to 1.6. So definitely possible to get omega-3 from plants. All right, so the weekly challenge. This week, I want to encourage you to aim to eat one serving of plant-based omega-3 food sources every day this week. So going back to this list, whether that's including chia seeds or flax seeds or walnuts, or maybe you try to have a, you know, a half a cup to a couple of blueberries every day, something to get um, at least one serving of plant-based omega sources, uh, omega-3 sources uh, every day this week. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you all next week.